It has come to my attention through people asking me via posts, comments, and private messages that some of you do not know what D&D is or what exactly I'm talking about when I say D&D. Some of you have never heard of D&D. Some of you have heard of it but don't have any familiarity at all. And some of you think that it's a video game. There are D&D video games. Icewind Dale, Baldur's Gate, Neverwinter Nights, Dungeons & Dragons Online. Those games were all based on the game D&D, &D, but they are not D&D &D, uh, in and of themselves. So when I talk about D&D, &D, I'm talking about this kind of game you see right here. You're, on, you're playing at a table. There are actual people there. You have pens and paper and dice and miniatures and a little map on the, on the tabletop. And uh, that's D&D, &D, not the computer games. I mean, those count as D&D, &D, but that's not what I'm talking about when I say D&D. &D. Now, what is D&D &D when you get down to it? D&D &D grew out of min, uh, a w hobby in the 60s and 70s called uh, historical wargaming. People used to recreate battles from history, like Napoleon's battles or World War I battles, and... From And they had to develop rules for how to uh, resolve conflicts. When this regiment shoots at that regiment, how do we determine if they hit them and if anybody dies from that volley of fire? Well, they created a set of rules, and to add a little bit of variability into it, they used dice to uh, generate probabilities. Well, big historical battles suddenly turned into big fantasy battles, thanks to things like... Uh, the Lord of the Rings. People wanted to play, you know, the man versus the orcs and battle it out that way. And then big fantasy battles turned into small fantasy battles and eventually into people playing individual characters and traipsing through dungeons. And so that's where D&D &D got its start. D&D &D is a role-playing game. And what is a role-playing game? Well, if you ever played Cops and Robbers, if you ever played Cowboys and Indians, if you ever played House, where you pretended to be a daddy and you pretended to have, you know, and maybe the girl next door pretended to be a mommy and you pretended that you were living together and had a house, uh, that was role-playing. You were pretending to be somebody else. And that is sort of the heart of d and In d and &D, you have a gaming group and a gaming group you need at least two people to play D&D &D. but most gaming groups are four five six seven people large if you're lucky and one person takes on the role of a dungeon master and the other people are players and they take on the role of the PCs or player characters each player makes up one character as their alter ego in the game world. And this alter ego, I mean, just there's so many role playing games, video games that grew out of D&D &D and off the D&D &D model so that you're familiar with playing as a fighter or a cleric, also known as a white mage or a wizard, kind of called a black mage, stuff like that. So if you've ever played a role playing game on a on a video game, then you're, you're decently familiar with kind of what's going to go on in a D&D tabletop game. So each player makes up their character, and makes up a character entails two aspects. There's the game rules aspect, where just like in a video game, the rules determine you know how many hit points your character has, uh, what spells he can cast, how well he attacks, what kind of armor he can wear, stuff like that. And then there is the non-game rule aspect of your character. You create your character's name and personality and history and determine, you know, who this character is. You turn that set of game rules, that list of numbers on your character sheet that determines the game rules, and you, you add a person on top of it, someone with an actual personality. And so you then control that character. It is your alter ego in the game world. The dungeon master has a slightly more difficult job. Instead of one character, he has to make up everything else. 
everything except the player characters is the dungeon master's job. So he makes up the actual game world, he makes up all the NPCs, and he makes up all of the bad guys, all the monsters you go kill. Now, obviously, since you're not going to be interacting with them too much, he doesn't have to do as much when it comes to uh, the personality of these things. He doesn't have to make up the personality of the maid who cleans the north wing of the castle, because for the most part, you're probably never ever going to meet her or talk to her or have any meaningful interaction with her. Um, so, what does the Dungeon Master actually do then? He presents a scenario to the player characters for them to, uh, to which they react. So he engenders some sort of situation where they have to make a choice. And then the PCs decide what choice they'll make. And then the Dungeon Master decides what happened based on their choice, what changes occurred, and then represents the situation. That's a pretty difficult way of saying the Dungeon Master has you walk down a tunnel and says it branches off left or right. The players choose. Do they want to go left or do they want to go right? Let's say they go left. Well, now the Dungeon Master says you come onto a, uh, a large cavern, and at the far end of the cavern there is a, lar you know, a big fire and a pig roasting on a spit, and there's a group of orcs standing around, uh, sitting around getting ready to eat. So then the players decide, okay, do we try to sneak in, do we just charge at them, or do we turn around and walk down the other corridor instead? And we keep going from there. That's kind of how D&D works. You use this uh, tabletop map and these miniatures to better track any combat that occurs, because you, it's really uh, beneficial to know exactly how far different things are away from each other, because the game has rules for how far you can move, how far your attacks can go, things like that. So it's beneficial to have a map and miniatures. The dice are used just like they were historically. You use them to deter... It adds that random probability to determine whether or not you hit, which in video games is done in the background. And then, of course, you have this pen and paper and character sheets. That's just where you keep track of all the game rule information about your character. And this right here is called the Dungeon Master Screen. And it's set up on the table so that the Dungeon Master has a private space where his notes can go and he can roll dice so that he can keep that secret from the players and thus maintain a sense of tension and discovery for the players. If he didn't have this screen, then this guy and that girl could just lean over and look at the notes and look at the map the DM drew and know what, what's up ahead. And so that, you know, that would completely ruin the tension of the game, not knowing what was up ahead. If you want to know what actual D&D looks like, I'm going to put an annotation in here uh, to a video called 8-Bit D&D Reenactment. And uh, it's, a, it's also in my favorites. And it's, a, it's almost exactly what... It's very sad that this is almost exactly what most D&D games start out as. Because most of the people who start playing D&D are uh, teenagers, 13, 14, 15 years old. And uh, it's a socially awkward age, but that's what you get. So that's what D&D is sort of like. If you have any other questions about D&D, if I didn't explain anything very well, if you've played D&D and I completely glossed over something glaringly obvious, uh, feel free to add that in. If you're wondering what the point of D&D is, I guess I should say that I explained the interactions, but what's the motivation? Being a dungeon master, the motivation would be because you have these ideas that you want to get out, or you're just the only one who can do it, which is something that happens to me sometimes. And uh, there'd be no D and D if there's no D and D if somebody's not the dungeon master. So somebody has to take that onus upon themselves. In exchange, you're in control of pretty much everything, so you get that power trip. Players, on the other hand, the more they adventure, the more monsters they kill, the more treasure they get the more powerful their characters become. So there's that, just like in a regular role-playing game, as well as whatever storyline the DM wants to lay out so that the players can continue along that storyline, just like in a video game, and uh, you know, advance the plot, find out who's the big bad villain at the end, and then cut him down. And the big draw to D&D, as opposed to playing a video game RPG, is that in D&D, there are no invisible walls. 
Uh, you are only constrained by what the dungeon master is willing to do and what the players can think of doing. So there's a lot of freedom. And when you get into a really good group with a really good dungeon master and really good players, everything just, it's nice and flowing and there's no bad ideas about it. Uh, in real life, you end up with 8-bit reenactment, and uh, that's what actually usually goes on. But uh, the more you mature, the the less of that happens. So that's D&D &D in a 10 and a half minute nutshell. Bye-bye.